Blumhouse 90. Tonight starring... Art Carney. Larson Bean. Richard Hyden. Tom Tryon. Tanisha Stevenson. Jackie Coogan. Melville Cooper. Sue Randall. And special guests, Jeanette McDonald and Jean Raymond. Playhouse 90, brought to you by Singer, designer and maker of the world's most advanced sewing machines. Singer, known the world over by these friendly signs, the famous Singer and Red S trademarks. And by Bronson, makers of the world's greatest pocket and table lighters, and electric shavers for men and women. And Bronson all lighter fuel in the switch spout can. And by your gas company, in cooperation with gas producers, pipeline companies, and gas appliance and equipment manufacturers, will bring the modern miracles of gas service to your home. On Playhouse 90, to introduce tonight's show, Charles Bickford. Good evening. Tonight, Playhouse 90 presents the world's most famous relative, Charlie's aunt. The unique adventures, or rather misadventures, of a college boy who must choose between a fate worse than death or being dropped from the varsity shot put team. Charlie's aunt has been adapted especially for Playhouse 90 by Leslie Stevens from the hilarious play by Brandon Thomas. Oxford will shine tonight, Oxford will shine. She'll shine her beauty bright all down the line. Won't we look neat tonight, dressed up so fine. When the sun goes down and the moon comes up, Oxford will shine. Oxford Charlie's will shine aunt. tonight, Oxford will shine. She'll Directed shine by Arthur Penn. Right all down the line. Won't we Produced look neat by tonight, Martin Manulis. Dressed up so fine. When the sun goes down and the moon comes up, Oxford will shine. Got a good chap. Now, ready for the bowling song? Tennis, look alive. He's flat major. Here we go. Stop, bro. Here we go. Again. <laughs> Not bad. I think we need just a little bit more work and the last, you know, where it's Excuse going. me, gentlemen, but I have a note from the headmaster to be read aloud to the undergraduate sporting society. Right, you are, Brazzett. Now hear this, you chaps. Since no member of the sporting society has seen fit to volunteer for a part in the spring play, all ale drinking privileges are hereby curtailed and the village pub is declared off limits. Oh, oh, no. No. We can't lose our pub privileges, man. A man's got to have his mug of ale. That's right. right. We've simply got to pick a volunteer. I'm sorry to say, sir, that the only part not yet cast is that of a female. A female? A female. <laughs> yes, the role of the little orphan's grandmama. An old lady. <laughs> but we are the sporting society. Athletes, all crewmen, cricketers, shot putters. Right. We've too many muscles to play. Yeah. <laughs> now I ask you, which one of us is such a spineless weakling that he could play the part of a feeble old lady? <laughs> <laughs> we dressed up in all those old ladies. <laughs> oh, no, no, not me. No, sir. No old ladies. All those in favor of Lord Fancourt Baddeley playing the part. Aye! Oppose! Nay, nay. Tell the head he's got his old lady a toast to Lady Fancourt Baddeley. For she... She's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. Hey, 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 the coach. Good day, Coach Sanford. Can we offer you a mug of ale? We're off the university grounds now, Jack. You can call me just Sandy. Oh, sir. <laughs> no need to overdo it, Wimberly. I'll take that. Oh. <laughs> Lads, I dropped over to tell you that things look grim. My spies tell me that Cambridge oh. has produced squad after squad of champions. Now, let me tell you, lads, this year it looks as though they're going to out-pitch, out-punch, out-punt, out-put, and out-point us. Yes, sir, their, their coxswain strokes them at 80, even on choppy seas. And their tennis team fairly burns the fuzz off the ball. And their fencing stars are masters of the foils. 
and their shot put placers can really pot that shot, or shoot that pit, or shut that pit, uh, uh, put that shot, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Humberley. All in all, lads, it looks as though Oxford is in for a hard time defeating Cambridge. Oh. Well, don't worry, Sandy. We're going to give all we've got, aren't we, Jack? Yes! I wanted to hear you say that, Jack. I wanted to feel the spirit here in the sporting society. Yay! Yay! I'm very proud. Oh, uh, 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 Beverly. Yes, Coach, sir. Now, you understand, I appreciate zeal. I care when a man gives it all he's got. But you cannot apply for all the sporting teams here at Oxford simultaneously. It is a physical impossibility to box, boat, fence, swim, ride, play battle door and shuttlecock. Well, yesterday, I saw you competing in the trials for the 100-yard dash. I held a clock on you. Your time was seven minutes. <laughs> I lost a sneaker. So no excuses, Beverly. Now, I understand the trouble you're having with your foot gear, so I took it upon myself to bring along an old pair of track shoes that once belonged to Whizzer Cavendish. Percy Whizzer Cavendish? Fleet, fleet lad. Now, I want you to shave Four minutes off your time. Cut it down to three minutes and I'll let you stay on the bus. Oh, I can do it, sir. Oh, and uh, I also saw you attempting to put the shot. It's rather heavy, sir. But you're not supposed to roll it. <laughs> now, I brought this along. I want you to practice lifting this. Get the knack of it. You've got to pump up the old biceps, oh. you see. One, two, under the chin. Breath. Mm. One. And explode. Now, do you think you can master that? Oh, let me have it, sir. <laughs> what a thing is... Excuse me, my lord. Uh, where shall I put your dress? Uh, uh, take it back to my room, Brassett. Uh, they, uh, they want me to dress up and act like an old lady, coach. Who wants you to dress up like an old lady? All the chaps. Jack Chesney. Jack Chesney. And Coach, what's this about an old lady? Well, the head says one of us has got to act a part in the spring play, so we put it to vote and vote Fancourt one. It's for the good of the team. Oh, forget about the team. Forget about the team. Uh, uh, I'll try it on in my room, Brassett. <laughs> good luck. Well... I'm off, chaps. But as I go across the quad, it would be good to hear one of the old songs. There goes a prince. <laughs> All right, boys. Let's have him hear it. Blue Bells of Scotland. Blue Bells of Scotland. Oh, where and oh, where is your highland laddie gone? Oh, where and oh, where is your highland laddie gone? Brassett. Oh, Brassett. Uh, excuse me? About the luncheon. Yes, I'm just appearing, sir. The luncheon for five with food uh, suitable for young ladies. That's uh, watercress sandwiches, lady fingers, marshmallows, uh, candied fruits, and a little something sweet. Oh, yeah. splendid. Luncheon for five, you said, sir. There's you and Mr. Wickham and the two young ladies. And chaperone. Chaperone, sir? Well, a sort of house mother, Brassett, to see that everything is proper. Oh, I see they really are young ladies. Well, I should say, Mr. Wickham hopes to become engaged to his. Oh, when you, sir? Well, if she'll have me. But we must propose today or never. You see, they're off to Scotland tomorrow. But surely, sir, if you're going to engage in romantic matters, won't the presence of a chaperone tend to cramp your style, sir? Brassett, the more respectable the young ladies, the more they insist on a witness. Doesn't seem sporting, does it, sir? Hmm. I say, Jack, any news of the girls? Well, they'll do any minute, but where's your aunt? We've got to have a chaperone. I'm at the last six trains and not a sign of her. Well, perhaps you missed her in the crowd. I mean, after all, you've never laid eyes on her. Well, she said she'd be here. Brassett? Yes, sir. Ah, is luncheon all prepared? Well, it's perfect, but how on earth are we going to set the proper mood of romance with your aunt staring at us? I intend to take Amy out in the garden to play croquet. Oh, ho, and leave Kitty and me here with Auntie? What if we want to go play croquet? Well, hang it all, someone's got to stay with my aunt. Well, what about getting Freddie Peel? He's out playing croquet. 
With his fiance. Dash it all. What about Reggie Wimbledon? Reggie's got mumps. Oh, that would hardly do. But then we've got to get Beanie Bancroft. He's got three girls of his own. Oh, hang it all. Who is there that doesn't have a fiance? There must be someone. <laughs> I gotta go lift the shot. You've had enough to drink. Oh, no, you thought I'd bend you over, over, didn't you? No, no, coach says all I need is a little practice. No, no, uh, forget that, Fanny. We need yeah. your help. No, wait, I, I've already spent my allowance. It's hardly money, old boy. The fact is, you're expecting guests for luncheon. Charlie's aunt is paying him a visit, and we'd like you to meet her. Well, I'm afraid I've got to punch the old bag. I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, boxing lessons in a half hour of the foils, a few tennis shots, and a quick splash in the plunge. But we need a brilliant conversationalist I'm to entertain sorry. a charming lady. I... <laughs> What's she like? Well, you see, we're not quite sure. I've never met her, She but... happens to be a widow and a millionaire. Look, here's a clipping from the society page. Donna Lucia Dalvadores. Donna what? That's her married name. She was social secretary to an old millionaire down in Brazil, and he married her and dropped dead. Here, read it yourself. Her only relative is a nephew at Oxford, Charles Wickham. See here, Fanny, you've simply got to join us for lunch. You'll find Charlie's aunt a delightful old lady. Oh, lady. And two young ones are coming, too. Oh, 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 I got it. One for you, one for him, and I get the old bat. <laughs> this is dead serious. The fact is, Charlie and I are in love. I hope you'll be very happy. <laughs> Amy Spedicue is Charlie's fiancée, and Kitty Verdon is mine. Yes, and Amy's got an old uncle named Spedicue, who also happens to be Kitty's guardian. He disapproves of college men, and he won't let the girls out of his sight. But it so happens that he's gone up to London for the day, and the girls are coming to visit. This is our only chance to see them. Uh, well, have you popped the question? That's why we want you to help us out. Oh, oh. Uh, you want me to propose for you? Hardly, old boy. We can manage that if you'll handle the chaperone. Yes. Chaperone? Oh, no, no. Well, why don't you get uh, uh, Reggie Wimbledon or uh, Beanie Bancroft? Hey, can't help us, Fanny. You're the only one. You know, I've laid your dress out on the bed. Oh, to look quite fetching. <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, Jack, Charlie, I... I, I... I do wish I could uh, help you out of this little dilemma of yours, but it, it seems that some friends of mine have voted me to play a part in the Dramatics Club play. So it's rather a pity that you can't find anyone to help you out of this sticky little dilemma. It's really a beastly shame. But, however, good luck with your luncheon. Give my best to your girls. And the old bat. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. <laughs> Pop up the old biceps. One, two. Have you lost your ever-loving mind? That's what he said. My husband. That and a lot of other things, too. Have you lost your ever-loving mind? You really mean you'd buy one of these sewing machines? An unknown, off-make, who ever heard of it? Kind of a thing like this. But, Charlie... Now, look, of course I want a singer. Who doesn't? But we're trying to save and these are so cheap, that's all. Cheap? Well, button nose, let me ask you something. What's cheap? Is it cheap if it doesn't stand up? If you maybe can't get parts for it? Or repair? Or you have to get it fixed every two weeks? Is that cheap? Now, you want the best sewing machine in the world, right? And since I'm paying for it, I do too. The best value. I don't want to get stuck. So you get yourself down to that Singer Sewing Center tomorrow. Oh, Charlie! Hey! <laughs> well, you know what happened. I got a singer. There are all kinds and all prices. Did you know that you can get a singer for less than $100? And for only a few dollars a week with no red tape either. And that's not all. With a singer, you're so darn sure. You get the finest workmanship money can buy. The most advanced design in the world. Singer is years ahead. And whenever you need it, you can always get fast, dependable singer service from expert singer company personnel. 
try and get service like that from anybody else. And Singer gives you a complete sewing course free. There are lots of things. And it's true, you know, a sewing machine is a lifetime buy. You really can't afford to take a chance. If you're in the market for a sewing machine, ask your husband. I'll bet you'll have a Singer. He knows those famous Singer and Red S trademarks are your guarantee of the best. You all right? To loosen my shoes. Your shoes? My track shoes. They're wrapped around my neck. <laughs> Here, thank you. Excuse me, gentlemen. You have a visitor. Yes, oh, I no, I'm not even just friends. No, sir. One sir, singular, a gentleman. Colonel Sir Francis Chesney. He says he's your father. My father here? Show him in. He's already here, sir. Dad! Dad! Oh, my boy, it's so good to see you. <laughs> I'm just on my way to take the waters. Thought I'd stop by, give you your allowance. You look ripping, sir. All starched and sunday. Uh, service in India tends to smarten one up, you know. Uh, I must say the old college still looks the same. <laughs> Jack, my boy, actually, I came to see you today because I'm afraid I have rather gloomy news for you. You and I are going to have to cut down on expenses. Cut down, yes, sir? It was all very well while I was colonel of the regiment. But now that I've come into the family title, I've also come into the family debts. Oh, ho, ho. debts are crushing, my lad. Fact is, you and I are quite short on cash. Good heavens. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, no need to take it too strongly, you know. Well, it's not me, Dad. It's just that, well, I hope to marry someday, and I want to have the proper means. Well, not a million, mind you, but... Yes, a million. Why not? Dad, what would you say to a wealthy marriage? Oh, I rather frown on that sort of doing. But you see, my chum, that is Charlie Wickham's aunt, is a millionaire and a charming widow. Oh, Jack, I can't let you do it. You mustn't throw your life away merely for money. Not me, Dad, you. <laughs> me? Why, you young rascal, you. <laughs> yeah, no thanks, sir. Uh, once was enough. Think it over, Dad. Have a spot of sherry. Get into some civilian togs with a jaunty little buttonhole and see how you feel. No, Jack, I couldn't. Well, at least take a look at her. No. Donna Lucia Dalvedore. No. Exotic. No. Exciting. No. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, no harm in looking, eh? <laughs> that must be our guess. Ah, well, you go right ahead. I'll uh, do as you say. I'll slip back to my hotel, spruce myself up a bit. I'll just slip out the back way, huh? Cheerio, lad. Goodbye, Dad. Get a driver, Mr. Wickham, sir. Uh, Charlie. Right now. Ah. I say, Jack, get the boy a shilling, would you? Well, I, uh... I'm all up, Charlie. Have you got a shilling? Oh, wait a bit. I say, Brassett, could you lend me a shilling? <laughs> Certainly, sir. <laughs> yep. Here you are, Jack. <laughs> Brassett, give this to the boy, would you please? <laughs> What's the matter? Bad news? Important business. Don't expect me for a few days. Lucia Dalvedores, no. She's not coming. She's got to. Go wire, telegraph. No use, there's not time. But the girls won't set foot in this place without a chaperone. We could ask the headmaster's wife. No, no, she'd have us expelled if we held hands. They're here. Do something. Brassett. Oh, Brassett. Don't answer. You've got to open the door. Brassett. Wait, 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 wait. What is it? I can't find my wig. His what? His wig for his costume. He's supposed to be an old lady. Well, what's that got to do with the problem? Old lady, chaperone. What are you talking about? Fanny can be your aunt. Fanny? My aunt. That's it. Let them in and ask them to wait in the conservatory. Then rush over to the dramatics club and bring back Lord Fancourt's wig. Right, 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 right you are. Wig? What sort of wig? <laughs> Is this the residence of Mr. Chesney? Yes, please enter, Miss. You can uh, lounge about here until they're ready. Until they're ready? They're preparing a little surprise for you. Oh, oh darling. Sweet. It's <laughs> <laughs> no good without the wig. It's perfect. Um, I don't know, Jack. No, no, no. Oh. The wig, they'd never spot him. Well, spot him? Spot who? The girls, they're here. They're here? Well, i better get out of this. No, no, no. You're going to meet them. What, what will you ask as soon as I'm undressed? Ah, I mean it. No, just as you are. Wait a minute. Charlie's aunt can't come. I can't and the girls that. won't stay without a chaperone. Wait so a you're going to be Charlie's aunt. Oh, no, not me. No, no chaperone. Uh, I may be an old lady, but I'm nobody's aunt. You want to be on the team, don't you? Oh, forget about the team. You want Oxford to win at the sports festival? Forget about the sports festival. 
If you want us to beat Cambridge, I'll ask you not to speak that word in my room. <laughs> well, Charlie here is captain of the games and has the power to pick the teams. Now, if you don't cooperate, he'll go to the coach and have you declared unfit. You'll never race again, Babbley. You're through running, fencing, hop, skip, and jump. Washed up, finished. You wouldn't. <laughs> wouldn't he? Tell him, Charlie. Do as we tell you or turn in your boxing shorts. <laughs> Does that include shot put? Barred from all athletics for life and drummed out of the sporting society in disgrace. All right. <clears throat> what do I have to do? Those girls have got to believe that you're Charlie's aunt. I'm Charlie's aunt. Be dignified and gracious. Lend charm to the occasion. Can I wear my track shoes? Absolutely not, and no practicing. No golf swings or tennis serves. No left hooks or right crosses. A sweet, quiet, delicate little old lady. I won't do it. Barred from the team. For life. Excuse me, gentlemen. The young lady's getting restless. I think they're about to go. Go? Well, sir, them some toffee and lemonade. Tell them we'll be there in one minute. Uh, about the wig, sir. I wasn't quite sure which was Lord Fancourt, so I bought the lot. Now listen, Fanny. You get into your wig and hurry. Bear up, Fanny. It's how a man faces the crisis that counts. This can lead to big things. Big things? What are you talking about? Mm. Poise. Poise. Balance. Balance. Qualities a, a great athlete needs. I, I, I never thought of it that way, Charlie. And the sporting society will be indebted to you for life. Sporting society? You really think so? I know it. Right on. Oh, there's a good <laughs> story. And it... Oh, I say, I don't think that's it. No, eh? Um, that must be the little orphan girl. <laughs> the Lord, this man is innocent. Now, will you stop that, oh, Betty? Please, come on. Little fun. Who's the little chatterbox? The girl that put the open lock. Hey, you hurry! <laughs> oh, Coco San love Englishman. Will <laughs> you break Coco San's pretty black feet? I warn you, Fanny. You're not watching cookies? Now, come on. <laughs> Yes, now, good enough. They're leaving. Here we Where? go. Where? Come on. Heads up. Oh. <laughs> Kitty Verdon. Amy Spettigue. Donna Lucia Dalvadores. Charlie's aunt. Say something. <laughs> Hello there! <laughs> now, a word from our alternate sponsor of this portion of the show. Look! Here's a man who can run, hurdle, pole vault, even win the Olympic decathlon twice. It's Bob Mathias, and he can do everything except keep his hair in place. I can even do that now. You see, since I started making movies here at Bat Jack Productions, I've been using Vitalis. And I can tell you firsthand that Vitalis keeps your hair neat without grease. Here's the reason. V7, the new greaseless grooming discovery. No other leading hair tonic has it. Only Vitalis. And it really works. See? Because Vitalis with B7 is greaseless, it won't rub off, even on a clean white glove. Never leaves messy stains the way ordinary cream and oil hair tonics do. Well, how about it? Why don't you try Vitalis? That's new Vitalis with B7. It keeps your hair neat all day, the greaseless way. After station identification, we will return to Playhouse 90. Tonight, starring Art Car and Connie, Orson Bean, Richard Hyden, Tom Tryon, Venetia Stevenson, Jackie Coogan, Melville Cooper, Sue Randall, with special guests Jeanette MacDonald and Jean Raymond. This is the CBS Television Network. We now return to play.
Playhouse 90. This half hour brought to you by the Ronson Corporation. We've brought you some flowers. Oh, oh, very sweet of you, my dear. Not <laughs> dragon, bachelor button. And Johnny Jumper. And Johnny Jumper. <laughs> my husband is a horticulturist. Got a green thumb. He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> he spread all the way up his arm and killed him. <laughs> this flower shaft. Stick him in your bodice. What makes you think I'm wearing a bodice? Up here, you idiot. Oh. Mr. Wickham, you look a trifle pale, are you, Will? Yeah, all the excitement. He's just meeting his aunt today for the first time. May I arrange these for you, Donna Lucia? <coughs> we put them in vases here in England. Oh, thank you, my dear. Thank you. Uh, here in England? Uh, uh, what did you say my name was? Donna Lucia Dalvadores. What am I, Irish? <laughs> no, English. She married Don Carlos, South American banana king. Uh, uh, do I have any children? No, you fool, you're a widow. And a millionaire. Got, got it? Got it, got it. Got it. <laughs> Well, yes, you do have quaint customs here in England, uh, but I'm quaint too, you know. I'm a, a South American. Uh, that is, I married a banana. <laughs> I know you punch, you might say, but no little bananas because I'm a minnow and a millionaire. Oh. <laughs> well, it's that new South American slang. Oh, you must teach us. <laughs> oh, oh, I'd be delighted to, my dear. Perhaps while I teach you, we could go strolling through the garden. Uh, Charlie and I can show them the garden down at Lucy. Oh. Oh, I dare say Oxford seems strange and exotic to you, Donna Lucia, but it's a darling old place, and Amy and I would adore to show you about. Well, the pleasure would be mine. You're staying over till tomorrow, aren't you? Well, I, uh, am I staying over till tomorrow? Oh. No! <laughs> oh, please do. I'm afraid this is Artie's first and last day. Yes, uh, important business appointments. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we've so long to know you. Have you? My dear. Mr. Wickham has told us so much about you. He, he's made us quite love you. Has he made you quite love me, my dear? And I feel the same, Donna Lucia. You do, you precious creature. I feel I've known you for years and years and, and love you as if you were my very own aunt. As if I were your very own aunt. <laughs> oh, it's not every day that an old fool like me has two sweet, such adorable little girls say such sweet things. <laughs> May I kiss your cheek, Donna Lucia? Don't hold back, my dear. <laughs> I'd like to follow suit, if I may. Oh, have at it, you precious dears. <laughs> oh, makes me feel all trembly. I tell you what I'm going to do in return. To pay the compliment back, I think I will give each one of you a big kiss in return. Oh, I say, Donna Lucia, can't we dispense with all this? Oh, hush, job. <laughs> his head. I'll kill him. Shall we go around again? <laughs> Mrs. Pettigrew bashing down your front door. Pettigrew! He must be here for you, Amy. My uncle hit him. He was lucky. Oh, he's so strict. I'm sure he'll take a dim view of our business. It's perfectly proper. I know, but he's a tyrant with Kitty. You see, she's an heiress and he's a legal guardian. Can't you send him away? We can hide in our room. Yes, Fanny <laughs> can handle it. Who? I said Auntie can handle oh, it. Oh, no, she. You stay right where you are. <laughs> Be polite and get rid of him. Why is there no one to answer this confounded door? Why didn't somebody answer the door? How dare you force your way into my quarters, sir? Pardon, madam, I was under the impression that this was an all-male university. It seems that you are pitifully mistaken. But are you in residence here? That is none of your business. But I was under the impression that... You were under the influence. I can smell your breath clear across the room. It's wilting the flowers. Are you You don't say a word. You are obviously stoned. <laughs> your hat, sir. Take it off. Oh, dear. Don't sit down. I didn't say you could sit down. Did, did you send up a calling card? Yes, I have a card here. Let me see it. I refuse to accept it. But you didn't click your heels and bow. You didn't kiss my hand. You didn't send me up any present. What kind of a gentleman are you? Uh, madam, it is not you whom I am here to see. Then whom are you here to see? 
<laughs> Mr. Jack Chesney. Oh, a likely story, Mr. Jack Chesney, is not present. I am the only one present. But the porter said the two young ladies, my niece and my ward, were seen entering the building. I said I am the only young lady present. <laughs> but we saw them come in. And then they went out. Uh, <laughs> then they were here. Who? They? <laughs> Who's they? My niece and my ward. <laughs> Never do that. I know they are hiding here somewhere and I will find them. Amy, Kitty. <laughs> 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 You're not going to enter that room. And why not? Because my laundry is hanging out to dry. I do not wish any drunken satyr feasting his eyes on my personal flimsies. <laughs> You're a very, very irritating old woman. Leave my presence and don't come dare come back here in this disgusting condition. Help me, madam. Help me. Out. Help me, madam. Out. And swear. Oh. Oh, Lucia, how can we thank you? We're simply magnificent. I've well, got to give you another great big kiss. Oh, me too, me too. Me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get punch his head. I'll strangle him. Colonel Sir Francis Chesney, Her Majesty's own Belgore elephants, retired. My dad. Uh, Donna Lucia? Oh, yes, Am I related to him? No, you poor boob. You're Charlie's aunt from Brazil. Yeah, from Brazil. Where the nuts come from? Where the nuts come from? <laughs> yes, my boy. Uh, Kitty Verdon, Amy Spedicue, and my roommate, uh, Charlie Wickham, my father. Delighted. How do you do, sir? How do you do, sir? Has, uh, has she arrived? She here? has indeed, sir. Charlie, would you introduce your aunt? Uh, aunt Lucy. Up and over. Lucy and Alvadores. Colonel Sir Francis Chesney, Jack's dad. Uh, charmed, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 how do you do? Uh, how do you do? I'm Charlie's aunt from Brazil, where the nuts come from. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir? Is that the lady? Lady, sir? The wealthy widow? Yes, sir. Oh. Well, don't rush off, Dad. Dear boy, this is quite a sacrifice. What is, sir? Well, I mean, look at her. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, Dad, It's all right, me... Jack. No, but let it's me... It's all right, Jack. I feel it's my duty. It's all right, darling. You just give me a moment. Luncheon is served. Donna Lucia, may I help you? Oh, I'm uh, lavish. Listen, go Sit next to my dad and don't lead him on. <laughs> dad, <laughs> will you take Donna Lucia? Oh, oh yes, of course. Oh, they delight to allow me, Donna you. Lucia. I do hope that you'll be sitting next to me. Oh, oh so do I, Donna Lucia. Oh, what a beautiful table. <laughs> Napkins made of Irish linen, Swedish cutlery, and a fruit sip. Sandwich. <laughs> Yes, a beautiful bowl of fruit. Sir Francis, do have some fruit. I brought it as a special gift up from my native land where it was plucked fresh from the orchards by a happy person. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> a very pretty flower. Oh, do you, do you like it? It's a beauty. Oh, well, Elena, please, sir, accept it. I shall have it stuffed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, please, thank you. I was right. That old frump tried to mislead me. Mr. Spedicue. Do not address me, sir. So, this is how you deceive me when my back is turned. Mr. Spedicue. I said do not address me, sir. But, sir, we'd like to explain this. My is... business is with these young ladies. <coughs> uh, Mr. Spedicue, uh, your hat, sir. Take it off. You didn't send up a call. You must cut my hand. Where's my present? Oh, madam, will you leave me alone? You forget yourself, sir. There happen to be ladies present. And I happen to disapprove of their presence. And I demand that they come with me at once. Ladies, at once. You cannot offend Mr. Wickham's friends. I do not know them, sir. And I do not wish to know them. I am Colonel Sir Francis Chesley. And this delight. No! Is... Bother to introduce me. I don't care to know the old bounder. <laughs> I am engaged to find my niece and my board lunching with young gentlemen against my permission. Well, they came to meet Charlie's aunt. Boulder Dash. Sir, I insist that you meet her. Therefore, allow me, Donna Lucia Davidores, this is Mr. Uh, Spetigue. Donna Lucia Davidores. Mr. Spetigue. A celebrated widow and uh, millionaire. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Charlie's aunt 
from Brazil, where the nuts come from. <laughs> I behaved rather like a ninny earlier, Donna Lucia. I'm terribly, terribly sorry. Well, uh, you have been acting like a revolting boar, but since you apologise, you may stay to luncheon. Am I forgiven? Yes. Take this as a peace offering. <laughs> oh, how exquisite. <clears throat> allow me, Donna Lucia. Allow me. Well, I think you're all right. I insist my... Oh! complete shave possible only with the all-new Ronson 66 with Super Trim. The one and only shaver that can give you the five-way shave. The first way. Ronson shaves you closer than any other shaver ever made. It gets down to the very base of your whiskers because of its exclusive micro-thin head. So thin, you can actually see through it. The second way. The Ronson 66 trim sideburns straight and neat thanks to Ronson's exclusive Super Trim. And the third way, Super Trim also makes short work of those long hairs in the color zone, whiskers that other shavers just roll over. The fourth way, mustaches can be trimmed and shaped in a jiffy with the Ronson 66. The fifth way, even the back of your neck can be trimmed up clean as a whistle with the Ronson 66. And there you have it. That's the five-way shave, the perfect complete shave you get only with this. The all-new Ronson 66. And when you finish shaving, just remove the head, flick on the switch, and the Ronson power cleans itself. Yes, Ronson, and only Ronson, gives you power cleaning and the five-way shave. Now, there's a big 850 trade-in waiting for you on your old-fashioned electric shaver, so get your Ronson 66 tomorrow. And girls, you hint for the fabulous lady Ronson for yourself. It's the glamour gift of the year. The gentle, modern way to dainty feminine grooming. Keep your underarms and legs satin smooth with Lady Ronson, choice of four stunning colors. Oxford will shine tonight. Oxford will shine. She'll shine in beauty bright. Hold down the line. <laughs> Have you found him, boy? I've looked all over. He's got his nerve strolling off with our girls. I've ordered tea for six out by the summer house, and he has to pour. Oh, he'll regret this. Oh, good to see you, Ren. Oh, good to see you, Sandy. We're on the university grounds now, Chesney, so suppose you go back to calling me Coach Sanford. Do you mind? Of course, I lost my head. Is it? You didn't happen to see anybody strolling about the garden on your way over, did you, Coach Sanford? Well, just an old lady with her arms twined around a couple of young girls. Donna Lucia, oh. My good man, did you happen to see Donna Lucia in the vicinity? Well, she's supposed to be serving tea out here, sir, by the arbor. Oh, tea. The cup that cheers but does not inebriate. <laughs> You're just about the sweetest chaperone in the whole world. Sweetest, nicest, and dearest. Well, we do have fun. <laughs> oh, Charlie, there you are. Did you think you'd lost us? Yes, I'm afraid I did. Come along, girls. We're going to have tea. Oh, no. See here. You've got to stop fooling about with our girls. Now, come on and pour us some tea. Oh, pour your own tea. But the senior lady present always pours. Why? It's the custom. That's why chaperones always pour. There's nothing to it. Look, you simply take piping hot water, pop in one teaspoon of tea for each person, stir the whole thing up, and slush it through a strainer. Uh, water, tea, stir, slosh, one lump or two. Perfect. Now, come on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, here you are, you dazzling creature. I am simply famished for a spot of delicious tea. Well, one lump or two, cream or sugar? No sugar, lemon with milk. 
Clifford. Uh, just a dash of cream, please. Yes, eh? cream. Two lumps, please. Two. Three for me. Six, please. Thank you, silly boy, with a sweet tooth. <laughs> and a little of each. And a little of each. Uh, Bassett, is the water piping? Boiling, madam. Good. Now well, then. Oops. <laughs> Jasmine. Oolong. Lapsang. Charm. Have a hot one for tea? Well, I think we'll just make it a pinch of each and one for the pot. Two for you. Two for you. So we'll have the homemakers touches with the blun and a little cream. Oh, this is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Why? This seems to be turning to fudge. <laughs> sugar goes in the cups, you idiot. Oh, the sugar goes in the cups, you idiot. Catch <laughs> 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 Sir Francis. A brew of nectar for you. <laughs> <laughs> what about me, Don Lucia? Oh, you will get yours. <laughs> <laughs> what is the backhand catch? I used to play a little beanbag as a girl. <laughs> <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. My hat. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Spaghetti Gill. I always make my drink <laughs> 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 it's good for the hair. I always rub a little tea in my wig. Uh, Quite pure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, may I see you for a moment? Certainly. Hey, Kitty, would you finish pouring? <laughs> Come here. Look. Will you stop floundering about? You're making a perfect fool of yourself. Now, look. You don't like the way I pour tea? Get yourself a new chaperone. I'm through. Fed up. Brass I'll meet you in my room. Now, listen. Mr. Spedigue wants to talk to you, and my dad wants a few words, too. I don't have to take any criticism. Now, wait. I've got to warn you. Dad is planning to propose. Is that so? Well, I'm not going to marry him. Of course not. But he'll get you alone long enough so you can refuse him. No, this is the end. No more. I've got my own life to lead, you know. I'm going to my room, put on my new track shoes, and practice my foot. But what about the tea? Pour your own tea. <laughs> Come back here. <laughs> Lost her. Drat it. <laughs> ah, there you are, my lord. I'm just polishing your trophy. Oh, good man, Bassett. Well, you might, uh... Keep an eye out for Mr. Spedigue while I get in a quick workout. Certainly, sir. He's been chasing me all over the garden. I suppose it's good for the old leg muscles, eh? Feel these, Bassett. <laughs> Bands of steel? How? <laughs> <laughs> you brought up my old punching bag? Yes, sir. And I polished your new track shoes to a high gloss. Oh, I can hardly wait to tie them on. But first, a few whacks at the old bag. Uh, you find your boxing gloves on the dresser, sir. Oh, yes. I ordered the ladder in to make them soft and flexible. Good man, substance. Bassett. See if we can get into them here. Yeah. My, they are tight. I think they sunk a bit. You have, sir. What? There we go. That's it. That's it out of the way. On your guard, Mr. Spedigill. <laughs> On your guard. Action in. Look to shorts. Action tucked in. There we go. One, two. Put the shoe. Put the right hook and left to the button. And I bump on the beezer. And I bump on the bean. And I crack on the muscle. And he opens the scar tissue and there's blood running all over the floor. I don't feel so good. <laughs> Enough of this bloodshed, Brassett. Take off this glove, eh? That's it. Pull. Ah. Now, toss me the shot put. Uh, toss it, sir. Uh, place it in the palm of my hand. Oh, yes, sir, like this. Yes. Ah! <laughs> I can't quite get the knack of it. <laughs> ah, somebody coming. It's Mr. Spedigue, I think, sir. Oh, dash it off. What am I going to do with oh, this? Oh, uh, just tuck it in the bag, sir. Oh, yes. Take off the phone. Oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> My good man, have you seen Donna Lu? Ah, ah. There you are, hiding from me, you naughty girl. Uh, I'm not to you now, Mr. Spettergill. But I brought you a present this time. Look, a box of delicious marzipan. Oh, thank you. And in return, I would adore to kiss your dear little hand. 
Oh, come now. You beautiful Ted Chris. Let me kiss it. Uh, only if you shut your eyes. Shut my eyes. Oh, how charming. Very well. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, skin soft as baby love. <laughs> oh, Donna Lucia. Mr. Spedicu, I'm not that kind of a girl. No, you are the baby, and I am the moth. Keep your distance, I am putting my foot down. <laughs> you spitfire. Keep your distance, Mr. Spedicu. Let me be Samson to your delight. I warn you, sir. Oh, so you have only played blind man's buffet. Oh, I know you two shy little coquettes. You're all to drive men mad. Well, I'm coming for you, ready or not. See, my eyes are closed. I can't see a thing. Here I come. <laughs> My kisses, Mr. Spellegill. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I must be going. Oh, uh, Donna Lucia, um, uh, you have uh, forgotten your purse. Oh, 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 oh. so I have. Would you toss it to me? Why, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's flipped himself down the stairs. And out through the greenhouse. <laughs> That's and right, Professor. He was after my money. Didn't care for the real me. Now, oh, Bassett, I've got to get out of this mad world. I've got to get away someplace and find myself. I think I shall go have a mug or two of nut brown ale. Uh, if anybody should ask me, tell them I'm taking a beauty nap. Beauty nap, sir? Uh, oh. <laughs> Kitty. I wonder if I might speak to you about something special. Whatever do you mean, Jack? What I mean is, we're all alone and no two people have ever been so... so... What is it you're trying to say? I mean, no two people have ever been so... So what? People don't just hit it off the way we do. <laughs> you mustn't say things like that. It's so rare, so perfect. Something all our own. One perfect moment. Just we two. Unfortunately, I'm not too well off. The family fortune has been cut down by debt. Do you think I care about material things? Fortunately, I have sufficient income to face the future. Do you think I care about mundane matters? Oh, my darling, would you? That is, could you? Go on. What I'm trying to say is, will you? That is... Say it. That is, can you? I mean, I want you to. I beg of you. Are you asking me to marry you? Do you mean marry you? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> but we'll have to get permission from my guardian, Mr. Spedigue, in writing so that he can't retract it. But we'll have to get permission from my uncle, Mr. Spedigue. Good, I'll ask him right away. No, it's better to have a woman ask him. Kitty? No, no, your aunt, Donna Lucia. There's only one person who can get a letter of permission from him. Amy? No, Charlie's aunt, Donna Lucia. You wait here while I go find her. Wait for me while I find her. Congratulate me. Me too. Never before. In the history of the world. Have two people ever been so in love? And you know, we owe it all to Fanny. Lord Fancourt Babbley. He's really a noble sort. Fine. Upstanding. A real friend. One that all the chaps can really count on. <laughs> I say, here comes old Spettigew. Now, why do you suppose he's carrying a purse, I wonder? Donna Lucia, oh. <laughs> Have either of you seen Donna Lucia? No, sir. Sorry, sir. I'm afraid I inadvertently snatched her purse. My, it seems rather oh. heavy. Oh, she's very rich. Donna Lucia, Donna... Donna Lucia, Donna... Donna Lucia. 
You've got to put on your costume. Wait a minute. Why? Will you give me one good reason? Because my dad thinks you're a millionaire and we mustn't disillusion him. Well, what about my illusion? See here, Fanny. <laughs> have you been drinking in the pub? What makes you think that? Your eyes are a trifle cloudy. I am in full possession of each and every one of my faculties. <laughs> well, I've never known to look at you. Now, here comes my dad. Now, get up there. All right. There you are, General Lucia. I've been searching all over. Searching? For me? But I... been right here in these bushes all this time. Uh, what precisely are you doing in there? Ooh, all sorts of exciting things. I, uh, I'm a nature lover, you see. Ooh, the lock. Builds this little nest in here. The woolly caterpillar spins its fuzzy cocoon. <laughs> Squirrels hide their nuts. Oh, it's rich in wildlife. Well, I'm a lover of nature myself. Do you suppose there's room in there for two? No, uh, it's rather a tight squeeze. <laughs> Donna Lucia, I, I do hope you'll forgive an old soldier his crude efforts at poetry. But when I first saw you today, I was reminded of a form of wildlife. Uh, what I mean to say is a tiny, fragile floweret blooming by the wayside. Excuse me a moment. He's drunk. You idiot. Don't you see he's building up to the proposal? He called me a flower. Get back up there. Right, oh. <laughs> oh, there you are. Uh, Donna Lucia. Uh, uh, I brought you some tiny mementos of my esteem. Uh, this fragile flower you gave the other away, you know. <laughs> And uh, this little golden locket contains a tint-type photograph of me taken in India on an elephant. On an elephant! <laughs> and last, this lovely strand of beads for you to wear about your golden throat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Donald Lucia, I wonder if you know what a man longs for when he's lonely, desolate, and wretched. A hey, drink! No, someone to share life's intimate moments with. We could have such jolly times together if we were in man and wife. May I said it, I've asked for your hand. Do you accept? Uh, no, I refuse. Oh, mayn't I even hope? Uh, no, you mayn't. Uh. I'll tell you what I will do, though I'll be a sister to you. Oh, oh only a sister. Well, you see, I'm in a rather peculiar <laughs> position. <laughs> I'm a woman with a history. Oh, well, then I guess I'd best not prolong this interview. Will you please accept my profound regrets and apologies for ever having broached the subject? Ooh, that's all right. Anytime you're passing this way. Thank you so much. Come here. How dare you make a fool out of my dad? Well, he called me a flower. You ought to have refused him at once. How could I refuse him till he asked me? At the rate I'm going, I'll end up in a divorce court. <laughs> Now, be careful. I wasn't able to tie your drawstring. I'll have to chance it. <laughs> Mr. Chesney, didn't I just catch a fleeting glimpse of Donna Lucia? Oh, there she is. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, young man. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, have you seen an elderly lady walk this way? I've never seen anyone walk that way. Water. One million old pocket and table lighters. 
Each one is worth $5, no matter what condition it's in, because now, Ronson, the world's greatest name in lighters, makes you the greatest offer in lighter history. Yes, Ronson will give you $5 for your old lighter toward the purchase of a brand new Ronson table lighter. If you have an American-made table lighter or any used automatic Ronson pocket or table lighter, it's worth $5 toward the purchase of a new Ronson table lighter. Yes, I said $5 for your old lighters, no matter how old or how beaten up they are. And here's just a sample of what you get in return. Fabulous new Ronson table lighters at modest prices. And the variety of smart Ronson finishes is simply amazing. You see, only Ronson has a lighter style for every room, every decor. There's genuine marble or crystal, rich textured wood, sterling silver, fine imported china, and smart hostesses to choose from. One for every room because they're the key to gracious living, modern entertaining. And each is precision made as a fine watch. So plan right now to trade in the old and bring home the new. Take your old pocket or table lighter to your Ronson dealer tomorrow and get $5 toward the purchase of a brand new table lighter. Get your brand new Ronson tomorrow. After station identification, we'll return to Charlie's aunt. Adapted especially for Playhouse 90 by Leslie Stevens. From the play by Brandon Thomas. This is the CBS Television Network. We now return to Playhouse 90. This half hour brought to you by your gas company. Today, more people than ever are heating water with gas. Because clean, dependable, automatic gas heats water fastest at the lowest possible cost. With modern gas, you can use hot water all day and never run out. The gas under your water heater turns on automatically, giving a constant supply of all the hot water you need. See automatic gas water heaters at your gas company, gas appliance dealer, or plumbers. Oxford will shine tonight. Oxford will shine. Ah, oh, back in civilian clothes, I see, sir. Yes, Brassett. The masquerade is over. I'm no longer going to be flouncing around in hags raiment. From now on, it's boxing shorts and sporting togs. Lay out my boxing shorts, Brassett, will you? You already have them on, sir, under your cricketing flannels. <laughs> Also, your swimming trunks and hockey pads. Don't you remember, sir, when you were dressing this morning, you said you wish to be fully prepared for a rugged day? Uh oh so I do, Bassett, so I do. Well, help me out of these flannels. I want a little freedom of action, eh? There we go. Now then, what's the idea of shucking your skirt? See here, you can't keep popping in and out of your pinafore. You're supposed to be out in the garden with Spedigue. Now, you can't back out now. The girls are looking for you. You've got to help them get Spedigue's consent. In writing. He's going to propose. Now, wait a minute. No more proposals. It's not worth it. Now, don't come any closer to me. I'm not going to put on that dress. Then we'll put it on for you. <laughs> Stand back, my child. Okay, that's not fair. Put that thing away, Fanny. But you are too against one. <laughs> Hang it all, Fanny. That thing is dangerous. It's not even tipped. Now, come on. Don't be ridiculous. Of course, it's tipped. I can hold you back and say with my skill. Not tipped. Ridiculous. <laughs> I won't do it. Not to. I can't. No, no, no. What about the team? Oh, I know what you chaps think of me. I want the team. But does the team want me? Fact of the matter is, I'm not essential. No, you're not. But Charlie is. What do you mean? Without Charlie, Oxford could never defeat Cambridge. What do you say? If you don't dress up and cooperate, Charlie here will refuse to play at the sports festival. And Cambridge will win. You wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't he? Oxford... Beaten by Cambridge. Bassett. My bodice. <laughs> There's our good man. I'll oh, even show you my snap wrist tennis serve. Oh, no, it's no use. Oh, but no. you've always wanted to learn a snap wrist oh. serve. Here, show him, Charlie. Come on. Now, you fold the fingers, wrapping them twice round with an overlap grip. You lean back at an angle of 82 degrees. Yes. You toss the ball in the air with a relaxed flip and then uncork your power from the heels of your feet to the crown of your head. Like this. <laughs> oh, 
know what are those young founders up to now. Now, you try it, Fanny. Oh, no, no, uh, uh, never mind, never mind. But it's the snap wrist, sir. The snap wrist? No, no, my, my heart isn't in it. Oh, come on. No, no. D hand him a ball, Jack. Come on, let's just try it. I, I... <laughs> come on. Now, over that grip. Right now. Now, 82 degrees. Right? Now, toss off the ball and uncork. Right out. Just report over to the infirmary. <laughs> Who on earth was that? I I couldn't make him out. Ah, here come the girls looking for Donna Lucia. Now remember, cooperate or uh, don't say it. Don't say it. <coughs> do you really think you'll do it, Jack? Well, he hardly inspires confidence. He's got to get that letter. I'm hopeful, Charlie. <laughs> Donna Lucia? Oh, there you are, you old darling. What do you think? Well, I was feeling a little ill, and I had a Nip of spirits. Oh, well, are you well enough to help us in a most important matter? A matter of the heart. The heart? We want you to speak to Mr. Spedigue on our behalf. Kitty needs a letter of consent to allow her to marry Jack. You mean a letter of consent? Yes, and I need Mr. Spedigue's permission, too. Will you help us, please? How could I refuse? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you just kiss her? Couldn't you just? <laughs> Couldn't you just? <laughs> so we'll go find him. You wait by the frog pond. <laughs> Excuse me. Could you direct me to the room of Mr. Charles Wickham? Yes, of course. My son, Jack Chesney, is his roommate. Your son, sir? Did you say Chesney? I'm Colonel Sir Francis Chesney. Were you ever Lieutenant Frank Chesney? I was indeed. And you don't remember me? Oh, I, I regret clear down to the quick, madam. I am afraid I have no recollection whatever. And it must be 20 years. 20 years. Now, where was the regiment then, I wonder? Let me get you my card. <laughs> Oh, this one says Mrs. Beverly Smythe. Everyone's card but my own. Then you've forgotten the evening you first embarked for India. Well, not entirely. You remember the girl you waltzed with? Lucy! <laughs> oh, good heavens! <laughs> oh, it's a fate. Uh, that very party I very nearly proposed to you. Oh, you were so handsome. And so young and shy. Then off you went with your regiment to India. I went abroad to Brazil. Twenty years. <laughs> oh, I remember you perfectly. You were dressed all in white, tied round the middle with blue. <laughs> like a box of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> what brings you to Oxford? Oh, a sudden impulse. I had decided not to come. I even sent a telegraph. And then I changed my mind for the first time in, in twenty years. Do you suppose somehow I knew we'd meet again? Well, it does seem like fate. Uh -huh. Oh, you must meet my son and his roommate, Charles Wickham. Oh, of course, young Wickham. They're, uh, they're entertaining a pair of young ladies at oh. the moment. And a rather frightening old widow. Widow? Charlie's millionaire aunt from Brazil. Brazil? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? You must meet her, Donna Lucia Delvadores. Uh, do I understand you correctly? You say a lady who says she's Donna Lucia Dalvadores is here? Yes. Oh, she's bounding about the garden somewhere. <laughs> Do you know her? Uh, well, I've heard of her. Oh, well, then you must give me your card at once. Now, let's introduce just you. Say, let's just say Lady uh, Beverly Smythe for the moment. Oh, there she is now. <laughs> she's Donna Lucia? Yes. Uh, Donna Lucia, uh, may we see you for a moment? Oh, uh, I was just on my way to the frog club. Oh, this won't take a moment. Uh oh? Uh, uh, Donna Lucia, uh, this, this is... Um, Mrs. Beverly Smythe for now. Uh, Mrs. Beverly Smythe for now. This is Donna Lucia Dalvadores. Mm, how do you do? Uh, I'm Charlie's aunt from Brazil, where the nuts come from. <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> I've been most eager to meet you. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> I knew your late husband. Intimately. 
Well, I must be going. <laughs> yes, I know all about you. Is that so? <laughs> More people than ever are cooking with gas. And here's Julia Mead to show you why. Nothing cooks as fast and is so cool, so clean, so fully automatic as a modern gas range. Fast, new super speed burners give you the exact heat you want instantly. Cool, well, the heat is gone the moment the gas is off. And the sparkling bottoms of your cooking utensils are proof that gas cooks the food, not the pot. And today's matchless gas ranges are fully automatic. For example, our brand new burner with a brain actually reacts to the pan temperature. The moment the perfect cooking temperature is reached, the flames go down automatically, and food just can't burn. Gas oven cooking is automatic too. Set this dial, then while you shop or do housework, the oven lights itself. Later, when the roast is done just the way you want it, off goes the oven automatically. Gas broiling requires no open doors. The flames consume all smoke and vapors. Most important, the controlled heat of modern gas makes you a better cook and automatically helps you to better meals. And gas costs less to buy, install, and use. So visit your gas company or gas appliance dealer and you'll see why today more people than ever are cooking with gas. There's a bench. I'll go get some smelling salts. Oh, 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 right over here. Oh, sit on this bench and water. Water? Sit right there now and I'll get you some water. Uh, uh, brandy, I mean. Brandy? Yes. Well, I believe I saw some in the study. Now, you oh, just remain perfectly still. Yes. Here, what are you doing here? You wake up now, come on. Uh, that woman, that uh, beautiful woman, the lady uh, Butterscotch Smythe. Lady Butterscotch uh, she, Lady Butterscotch Smythe, she knew my late husband. With, 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 uh, with your late husband? Yes, uh, a beautiful woman, with your dad. With dad? Yes. Never mind about that, you've got to pull yourself together. All this pedigree is coming and you've got to get his consent. I can't, I can't. You must. I, I, I feel faint. You uh, need peanuts. Here, eat peanuts. peanuts. Now, Fanny, pull yourself together. Oh, my God, oh, you broke my beads. They're all mixed in with the peanut. I <laughs> 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 see you at last. At last. I brought you a load. I brought your purse. Oh. Gee, I, I'm terribly sorry. I... That's all right. It's just a, an old purse uh, full of old money. <laughs> uh, I've been salvage it for you if you say the word. You would? Uh, yes, but uh, I would much rather sit here beside you and uh, squeeze you. Hey! <laughs> I'm sorry, is my cigar case hurting you? <laughs> uh, let's not get carried away, Mr. Sparrow. Uh, fair lady, if I seem headstrong, it is only because I am, I am so anxious to win your favor. Would you obey my slightest whim? Your whim is my command. Would you fling yourself into the frog pond? Boy, oh, gladly. <laughs> Can you swim? Uh, no, but I wade beautifully. <laughs> well, hardly the rugged outdoor type. Oh, but I'm in excellent condition. <clears throat> My uh, digestion is sound. My teeth are perfect. You would be getting a splendid specimen. Don't they sing up? Oh, how sweet to share your goodies. <laughs> Uh, you do anything I say? Anything. <laughs> Perfect teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you do anything I say, eh? Uh, would you give your consent to Kitty and Amy to marry the boys? <laughs> My consent? Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, 
After all, uh, we must share our happiness as we share our peanuts. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Romance is in the air. <laughs> Full cassette, one in writing, one all signed, sealed, and duplicate, and one for the files. <laughs> and uh, if I do, <laughs> perfect digestion. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. <laughs> Are you feeling all right? A bit faint. If I give my consent, will you say you'll be mine? Ah, oh, Donna Lucia, you have made me the happiest man. <laughs> I think I'd better get you some peppermint. You better take a few yourself. <laughs> and you take care of that nasty cough. <laughs> oh. Alone at last. I might have smoked all day. <laughs> Have a peanut. <laughs> You're feeling better. Oh, thank you. Do you? Do you smell smoke? Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, uh, must be the leaves burning out. Oh, no, 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 don't go. Now that you're feeling better, I'd like to talk with you about, uh, about your late husband, Don Pedro. Oh, that would be nice. You know, uh, when I first met Don Pedro, he told me he had no wife. Oh, he was a wicked storyteller and a very cruel husband. Oh, no, the Don Pedro I knew was noble, kind, and gentle. Oh, yes, he was. He was that. Uh, that was his father, uh, the old man with the white mustache. <laughs> uh, Donna Lucia, I'm surprised that you, uh, you don't indulge in the habit of smoking. So many Brazilian ladies enjoy a good puff now and then. Well, to tell you the truth, that's... Just what I was doing when you came in. <laughs> Don't mind me. Can I offer you one? Oh, no, no, thank you. You see, my not being a Brazilian lady, it might be thought odd. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any children? <laughs> oh, we have, uh, do we have any children? Mm. No, not many, uh, none to speak of, really. Uh, <laughs> children, what, uh, oh, hello, Coach Brasser. Mm. Oh, good to see you. How are you feeling? Oh, the doctor said I'll be just fine, but uh, I'm supposed to stay off of ketchup for a while. Oh, uh, <laughs> Coach Sanford, uh, uh, Lady Butternut uh, Snipe. My pleasure. Is that a cigar you're smoking, madam? Yes, it is. Doesn't everyone? Good <laughs> question. Yes, it is. <laughs> Don't you have a handful? Oh, if you insist. Go right to it. Ah, here we are. Ah, oh, Sir Francis, just in time. <laughs> ah, good. I, I see you recovered. Oh, I never felt better in my life. <laughs> Brandy and cigars, were any for you? No, thank you, thank no. you. And Sir Francis, you'll have yes, one with me. I'm sure you will. <laughs> and then, of course, one for the coach. Oh, God. <laughs> Racing guy. It just struck my head on something solid. Lady handbag weighing 30 pounds with a cannonball in it. Of course, a shot put with my name on it. Why well, I gave this to young Babbling. I also gave him a pair of 
tractors belong to Wizard Cavendish, he probably cast them aside, oh, too. No, 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 uh, no, uh, Coach Sanford, I'm sure he hasn't. He's probably up in his room at this very moment, uh, putting them on, uh, and I'll go get him and send him down. You'll see how he treasures them. Oh, I'd rather not see him. Uh, not now. No trouble at all, no trouble at all. Uh, excuse me, I've got a dash. <laughs> suitor of Donna Lucia's millions. Oh, oh, well, he'll soon find out his mistake. <laughs> Are you sure you don't envy him? Envy him? Think of her millions. Ah, uh, Lucy, when I saw your face... Yes, you didn't recognize me. But when I did... Well, you know how I feel about you. Are you sure you'd be happy living in a plain little cottage with your old sweetheart? And you really want me? A penniless widow? Nothing could make me happy. Thank you. Lucy. Oh, Sir Francis. Sir Francis. Oh, Sir Francis. <laughs> Congratulate me. You've landed her. Hmm? I want to announce it formally. Well, I may have an announcement of my own to make, Mr. Spettigo. Oh, this is, um... Uh, this is Mrs. Beverly Smythe for a while. Oh, charmed, but do go into the conservatory. We are all gathering for the celebration. Oh, no, 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 no. You were invited too, sir. Well, thank you. You sit there, Kitty, you sit there. Now, Mrs. Beverly Smythe, would you be so kind? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Now, I have something to tell you, something you will all be very, very pleased to hear. But uh, where is uh, Donna Lucia? <laughs> Here she comes now. <laughs> welcome, welcome, dear one. What's going on? I'm just about to share our little secret. <clears throat> As you know, I am a lonely widower, surrounded with grave responsibilities. But into my life, a good fairy has tripped, bringing with her unexpected light and joy. What's he talking about? Under her influence, I have consented to the engagement of my, my niece, Miss uh, Amy, to Charles Wickham, a distinguished young gentleman. Oh, I oh, say, good. Good. thank you. Good. And furthermore, I have consented in writing to the union of my ward, Miss Kitty Verdon, with John Chesney, son of my old friend, Sir Francis Chesney. Congratulations. Oh, oh that's that's all that's 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 wonderful. That's But what would you say to a third engagement? A third engagement? What do you mean? Yes, I allude to my own betrothal to our dear friend, Donna Lucia Dalvadores. <laughs> Shorts? False? All false? 
Holmes. You dig it up? I have been deceived, treacherously, infamously deceived. Bobberly, is that you? Uh, yes, folks, and the fat shoes are a perfect fit. I will not be taken advantage of. I rescind all consents, and I demand back the documents obtained under those fraudulent conditions. Oh, no. no matter. The letter has no legal standing, for it was addressed to Donna Lucia Dalvadores. And it has been delivered to Donna Lucia Dalvadores. But she, I mean he, is not Donna Lucia. But I am. But you, you are Lucy. Lucy. What? It too, madam. <laughs> is there no end to this trickery? My apologies, Mr. Spenigue, but I, I couldn't resist this little deception when I learned another lady had taken my place. Ah, but this little deception brought us together, Mrs. Beverly Smythe. You mean Lady Lucy Chesney. I will not be soothed by this romantic pap. This beastly boy has paid me for a fool. I shall have you up before the headmaster on charges of mischief. Charges of mischief? Now he'll never make the varsity team. But I assure you he meant no harm, Mr. Spenigue. No harm? He led me up the garden path. He accepted gifts of marzipan. But uh, it was only a lie. Learning will not save you, young man. You will pay for playing the sneak. Sneak? Uh, I will have you expelled before curfew. Drummed out of the university in dire disgrace. Drummed out? Don't worry, Lord Fancourt. I believe in you. And in the years to come when you speak of this, and you will, be kind. <laughs> We won't let him expel you. I know Mr. Spetty, you is fond of money, and I shall see that his nerves are soothed. After all, it's thanks to you that all of us here have, have found happiness. I'm sure you two have some, some wish that we might grant to show you our, our appreciation. Well, it's, uh, it's all right, uh, Lady uh, Butternut uh, uh, Chesney. <laughs> oh, come now, some... Some heart's desire that will bring you joy to match ours. I know, Don Lucia, I know. Lord Fancourt is a true blue sportsman. But, Jack... Yes, you are too, Fanny, and everybody knows it. And for seven years, he's been trying and failing to make the varsity team. Splendid! <coughs> Coach Sanders, I'm going to... I'm going to donate a gymnasium, a cricket field, and a full fleet of punts. Provided you think Lord Fancourt is fit to become a member of the varsity team. <coughs> Welcome to the varsity, Babylon. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> yeah, spread the news. Spread the news, John. Bobby May Varsity. At last I'm a member. Three smashing cheers for good old Fanny. Hip, hip, hip. Uh, now I can box, fence, run, swim. Hip, hip, hip. Oh, I'll make you proud of me, Coach Sanford. Call me Sandy. Sandy! <laughs> Hundred yard dash, Sandy. Good. I'll hold the clock on you. All right. Now, Sand Court Beverly runs again. Take your mark. Yes. Get set. Ready. Go. Oh, oh go. I like to get out early and practice diving. Work at hitting the water clean and sharp. A good dive depends strictly on me. You like to smoke, too. Yes, I do. Why Marlboro? Well, it's no one thing. The filter works good, yet you really get the flavor. This flip-top box is fine. Stands up. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro. Filter, flavor, flip-top box. Filter, flavor, flip-top box. You get a lot to like with a Marlboro. Filter, flavor, flip-top box. Marlboro, old-fashioned flavor in the new way to smoke. 
Next week, Playhouse 90 will present Clipper Ship, a film made especially for this series. Written by Bern Geiler, Clipper Ship is an exciting story of romance, adventure, and mutiny on the high seas. Appearing with me will be Jan Sterling, Steve Forrest, and Helmut Danteen. I play Captain Kingdom, master of the Sea Witch, a clipper ship that makes the voyage to Maracaibo carrying a dangerous and most unusual passenger, its owner, a woman. Playhouse 90, next week, Clipper Ship, starring Charles Mickford, Jan Sterling, Steve Forrest, Helmut Danteen, with Paul Fix. Tonight by Singer, designer and maker of the world's most advanced sewing machines. Singer, known the world over by these friendly signs, the famous Singer and Red S trademarks. And by Ronson, makers of the world's greatest pocket and table lighters. And electric shavers for men and women. And Ronson all lighter fuel in the switch spout can for easy filling. by your gas company in cooperation with gas producers, pipeline companies, and gas appliance and equipment manufacturers who bring the modern miracles of gas service to your home. Dick Joy speaking, portions of the preceding program pre-recorded. Playhouse 90 is a CBS television network production. This is KNXT Channel 2, Los Angeles.